What are my thoughts on the Baylor versus Utah game? First of all, it was a whole lot better than last week. After getting, I wouldn't say boat race, but get beat by double digits by Texas State. I mean, it's the truth. And a lot of people thought Baylor was going to get smothered by double digits, if not 30 points. That wasn't the case because Baylor led the whole game practically until the very end. I will say, I know there were a few no calls on Utah that should have been should have occurred. At least four pass interferences, maybe a few holdings as well on the offense. And I know I called them a few late. But the one pass interference call in the end zone was really a bad no call if you look at it. The defender was grabbing the jersey. However, there were other issues in the game that led to the barrel loss here. First of all, the offense had two turnovers, two picks. And and I really do believe Sawyer Robinson should have not have thrown that false second one. Just take the sack. Utah only has one timeout. They're probably going to get the ball back. Make them call their last timeout. And then maybe the outcome changes a little bit. Or at least give and give Utah no timeouts remaining for the rest of the game here. It's the truth. He did not. He did roll his ankle, and that's why the play calling had to change a little bit in the second half. The defense just didn't have an answer in the second half of the run. If you look at the numbers, and I you know the pass defense has to get some work too. We gave up some plays as well, and. And Baylor only scored three points on turnovers today after that one by Bryson Barnes on the pick, and he just hoped it, it would have been going out of bounds. Nope. Uh, the defender caught it, and we only scored three points. There were still some penalties that are like, come on. The offensive line, once again, had a few false starts, and that really hurt. They could have scored a touchdown on that first drive of the game. If there was a no false start occurred, Maybe that would have sparked for a touchdown right there. And maybe instead of getting a, a field goal off the point on a turnover, a touchdown, different ball game. I do think the defense got gassed in the second half. Look at the time of possession. I mean, you can't deny the truth. Utah, their passing game was not getting any anywhere fast, even with Bryson Barnes in the game and then Nate Johnson as well. I know he did better than Bryson, but you get the point. And Utah did not play their cleanest game either. I'm going to just say that out loud. Look at the pass, uh, the look at the score. I mean, look at the numbers for the passing game. I know Baylor didn't get as many as Florida, but still, I mean, and they did force two interceptions, but. They gave Baylor shot at the very end of the game. The wide receiver got behind him, and he was smart enough to go out of bounds at the between the 30 and 35 yard line and just get one more play with one more second. And I know there was a pass interference call, but like I said, there were other issues in the game that led to the loss more than just that one. I'm just telling the truth. And the defense just didn't make enough adjustments in the offense. I know the play calling kind of stunk. I mean, no, we're not as good. So, and because of Sawyer Robertson's injury. And if we didn't play Sawyer, we would have had a back of it, a walk on in the game. So, and he was just not the same. And it's when he rolled his ankle, Sawyer did. And the truth is, it's just a hard position to put Sawyer in. Your first career start is against a, a stout Utah defense. Even without some starters. I'm just saying, Utah, look at Utah's defense. And I will say this about Utah. If they play like that again, they're not going to beat the bigger teams in the in the, the Pac-12 this year. I'm being brutally honest. And I get Cam Rising did not play. I get it. But the point remains, you can't play like that. And, I mean... And... It's so painful, and this remind this loss reminds me of TC from last year. You had a lead late, you kind of had the game, but nope. 
So, yeah, it's just one of those things. And it's six straight losses now. They lose in every style they want. They get blown out by Kansas State. You barely lost to TCU. You barely lost to Kansas, I mean, to Utah today, despite being underdogs. I mean, that's the truth. And you lost in a bowl game to Air Force. You lost to Texas. I mean, that's the truth in all this. And six straight losses now does not help Dave Aranda. And I'm not going to say coaches need to be fired because I think I would rather I I rather have Mac Rhodes does do it for me. I mean, for me instead of on the opinion of it than me. I'm not the athletic director. I'm not going to say that he needs to be fired or what. But something got has got to change during the season, right now, or and even after the season. Look, it doesn't get any easier. And I get we have Long Island next week. I get that. But you got Texas next. I meant the following week. You got UCFN on the road. You got Texas Tech on the road. And that's before the bye week. Luckily, you have, and I know it's Cincinnati. They look good in their first game. but And then you got Iowa State and Houston. I mean, then back-to-back road games against Kansas State and and TCU are not ideal. And not, it's not ever ideal to have back-to-back road games. But it's the truth. And then you got West Virginia at the very end of the season. If there needs to be a change at the head coaching position, I'm open to it. And nothing will surprise me at this point in the season. I mean, uh, whatever happens from here on out, nothing will surprise me. And I know it's giving a political answer. And expect everything. I'm just tired of like setting expectations of this and then falling short. I'm like, whatever happens, happens. And... There needs to, to do, needs to be something to change here. And I get some guys are hurt. And it doesn't help that Sawyer had to be thrown in the fire today. Literally. And I know there were other guys as well that got hurt. And we don't have Jarrell Boykin still. Maybe he plays next week. At least we got Shato Reed back. But no Garmin Randolph. No Devin Lemire. I mean, that's just... And no Trey Emery. No Jarrell Boykins. I mean, that's the truth in all this. And the whole offensive line needs to improve. I get they did better than Utah last week. I mean, than than Texas State last week in terms of the rushing, but it was not by much. So, we just got to readjust. And whatever happens... If there's if Miranda gets fired or everyone gets fired, happens, and I'm not going to be shocked by any of this stuff from here on out. And it really is getting annoying to lose. I mean, lose close, lose blowout, doesn't matter. A loss is a loss. And he is already on the hot seat, in my opinion. Anyway, and. I'm not going to say he needs to be fired or doesn't need to be fired. Let's see what he could do. Because I don't want to be in a preconceived judgment on somebody who needs to be fired right now. Anyways, if you like the content, you can subscribe and see you guys later. Find the scars on the road to it. Let's go. And I just wanted to get this off my chest about all this about football right now. I'm just tired of losing, man. And y'all don't blame me. I mean, it's really annoying to lose. Especially when it's consecutive games like this. Start from last season to this season. Something's got to happen. And and I kind of went into this game, to be honest. Nothing will surprise me. Including a Baylor upset win. That almost happened. I mean, I would have been shocked if Baylor got blown out. Or Baylor barely lost. So, that's all.